I need to get out of here. Mrs. Carmichael is here to represent you. I don't want the case collapsing because the defendant wasn't given adequate advice. I told you, I don't need advice. I want it on record that Kirsty Soames is a liar. She's been abusing me for months. Hitting, scratching, throwing... Which contradicts every piece of evidence... Lying, bullying and twisting every word that I say. I wish I'd never met her. Which leaves me wondering, why did you propose to this woman you claim to hate so much? Because she's the mother of my baby. She's not the woman you love, though, is she? That's a Mrs. Fiona Fizz Stape, am I right? Don't bring her into this. But she is the woman you've been seeing behind your fiancé's back, swapping romantic texts on a secret phone. Take your time. You can make no comment. I tell you what, instead of starting at the beginning, we'll start at the end and work our way back, OK? Explain to me how Kirsty Soames came to be lying unconscious at the foot of your stairs in her wedding dress. She doesn't like being out in the dark. He won't know that about her, a real dad. The love is playing right into her hands. The social services are about to do a risk assessment of him and he's sneaking off with a ten-year-old girl right behind her mother's back. So what do we do meanwhile to here like lemons? You know, they could be halfway to France by now. It's her. Faye, what the...? Uh, Tim, y y where are you? No, she promised me she was going to netball. Oh. All right. Well, that's very good of you. How long? Right. Half an hour, then. He's bringing her back. What? And that's good of him? Well, I want to make sure he does, and if that means keeping on the right side, then... You haven't thought this through. I thought nothing else. But people around here respect you. But you're a Christian, a, a lesbian, and they accept you for it. Yeah, like they'll accept you. And if they don't, so what? Who cares? I'm happy with who I am. You'll care when they're calling you a liar. When women won't come in the shop on their own. When Dev sacks you because you're bad for business. You've got a bleak view of the world. Realistic. Look, shop jobs are ten a penny. Why? I've been so vile. Yeah, but you've got a gift, Jenna. You've got a good thing. Look, I wouldn't have been able to get through these past few months without you. And I don't care what your mum and wife says. I do really care about you. You know where I am, yeah? I heard Lloyd's cab. It's good to see you back on your feet, love. Cheers. Where's Ruby? Oh, they're bringing her back in a bit. The social workers. Is Jason in? Um, he's in the shower. Why, love? I should probably change the locks. Oh, good idea. I think Taryn will probably only smash the windows in, but hey. Not on my watch. Look, I'll send Jason round. There'll be no charge. Thank you for everything. If only she'd known. If only I'd said something sooner. Stop. The had us all fault. That puppy dog smile, the tragic past. We were all so desperate for a fairy tale ending. Nobody noticed she was living in a horror story. Mr. Dobbs has given a clear account of events, plus a number of leads for you to follow up. I need to get home to my daughter. It's not as simple as that. You've been accused of a violent offence. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? And there's a big glaring hole in your defence, namely that none of your neighbours was back it up. In fact, all the information we have, and they're quite a chatty bunch on your street, reinforce Kirsty Soames' version of events. Explosive arguments. Smashed ornaments. Thrown by her. Falls in the yard. Accidental gashes to the forehead. That was an accident. Miss Grimshaw from next door saw you grabbing Kirsty Soames roughly in the street. Mr. Dobbs is of previous good character. A steady family man with a business to run. Well, not to him. To him, I'm just some meathead who thinks with his fists, aren't I? <laughs> What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd have to take my hat out of the ring, wouldn't I? Yeah, I'm sorry, Patrick. Me too. OK, goodbye. He promised you an apartment. I distinctly heard him say. Well, when I turned him down, he let it to some American watercolorist. Anyone taking on the manager's job is going to have to find their own accommodation. And in Tuscan is best kept secret. That doesn't come cheap. Shame. Yeah. I have to be nimbler on my old pins next time. If there is a next time. Well, why can't Kirsty move out, go to her mum's? Hang on, it's his house. 
No, mine's too close. What about Connie's? Does he need somewhere to stay? Tell him he can stay at mine. No, Tina, are you sure? Cos people will be nasty. What, to a pregnant woman? <laughs> I'm a nasty back. No, I'm looking after him. End of. Did you hear that? I mean, it's not like we've made a commitment. Hadn't we? Well, we sounded Patrick out and now we know. Zilch. Nada. Nil point. I mean, a dream lifestyle requires dream money, and Gail, we simply don't have it. But it wasn't a dream. Well, not a fantasy, anyway. It was within our grasp. Pictured it in my mind. Felt the sun on your back. Smelt the jasmine. Tasted freedom. Oh, it would have been marvellous. You said half an hour. That was an hour ago. Don't say they might have got lost. I know. I should have got his address. I should have said we'd pick her up. Ring Joanne. No, hang on. We're going to the social services. We should be ringing the police. No. There you are. I've been out of my mind. This is the Tim Metcalf. Where have you been? I said you'd worry. Worry? You know there's a name for blokes like you. Yeah, Dad. So I can't do anything. Can't contact Kirsty. Can't even email her. Can't go within 100 metres of her. And if I want to see Ruby. If? Supervised visits. I raised that little girl. I knew when she was going to cry before yeah, she did. And you're a brilliant dad. Now what? An hour a week if I'm lucky. Some nomad with a degree and a clipboard watching my every move. Ruby's my world. People say that, but I mean it. Yeah, and we'll tell her all of this, Ty, when she's old enough to understand. You look shattered, mate. Why don't you just go get some kip, eh? This is your home now. I just want to get out of these clothes. Smell the police. <clears throat> don't get comfy, lad. You can understand why we're all so worried. We've all heard the horror stories about kids being targeted on the internet. She found me. Well, she shouldn't have been looking. No, it's human nature. I'm glad she did. I tried to find her for years, but it's hard when you don't even have a surname to go on. They do that for a reason. Look, I didn't leave a mum of my own accord. It's... It's hard living with a smacker. I was driven out and I've regretted it ever since. My mother never forgave me. Grandma Tess. I was the first grandchild. She died of a broken heart. And she left me this. It's a Metcalf family heirloom. You don't let the grass grow. <laughs> Kirsty! I know you're in there! Yeah, watching her life fall apart. Yeah, I'm surprised at you, Tina. Another woman. You're not so big with a big thought in that way, are you, Come on! Look me in the eye and tell me ever laid a finger on you. Look, this is harassment. If you don't go, I'm gonna call the police. Tina, come right. on, just leave it. Right, yeah. I'll go. But I'm not leaving it, not when there's a little girl missing her daddy. I'm gonna nail these lies. Do you hear that? I'm gonna let the world know what you're really like. Right, come on, come on, come on. It's all right, Kirsty. They've gone now. Back in harness then? Yeah, we missed my little gun. So you've speaking to Jenna before? Yeah. I've decided I'm going to go to the hearing and tell them what really happened. All right, and what's that then? Look, I did all the running load. I bought her a bracelet and I sent her playlists. And she was kind and she was professional. And I twisted it. And when she didn't feel the same, well, I lied. It's not what you said before. No, no, but this is the truth. And I need to say I'm sorry and to clear her name. You don't seem very relieved. No. Neither did Jenna. Look, you're a sweet kid, Sophie, but we don't need a sacrificial lamb. And I'm not being one. I just think Jenna deserves a break. She didn't have it as easy as me. In your shoes, I'd be wary. I messed up, and I'm the first to admit that. Sometimes I wish I'd never even hooked up with Jenny in the first place, but if I hadn't done, then Faye would never have existed. I was immature. I should have just taken her with me and left Jenny to fester, but... It... It didn't seem right, a bloke on his own bringing up a girl. Look, I'm a different person now. I drifted, I admit. I don't look much on paper, but I've got me act together. I've got a little flat, regular work. You know, when she got in touch online, when I saw a picture for the first time, it stirred things up about her and my mum. Made me want to put things right. 
You've got two daughters. Face told me you must know how hard it is to stay away. Talking to the wrong bloke, mate. You know, when she was going to sleep, she had two dummies. One for sucking and the other for stroking her nose. That's why it turns up at the end, look. And she was crazy for Edie McCready. From Balamore. I'm sorry if I had a dogs. If she saw one in the park, she'd cling on to me so hard I could feel her heart beating against my chest. It's a long time ago now. I'm not trying to take her away from you. Good for you. I just want to fill in the blanks. Uh, no, no, do you know what? This has gone far enough. Up to your room. Mom, some things are not appropriate for you to hear. Your mum's right. Go on, up you go. Don't leave that saying good night. I won't. I promise. We need to speak to DS Garrett. Yeah, it's urgent. Yeah, and he's working on a case, domestic violence, Kirsty Soames. We want to make a statement. What's your connection? Look, you've arrested an innocent man. You've got it all wrong. Is that right? Tyrone's a victim. She's been battering him. He's been going on for months. We've got proof. Room two. Working tonight. She's not. She's on a girl's night out, so it's either my place for a curry or the rovers for a lager. Only I uh, spoke to Sophie Webster before. Oh? What did she say? You're my daughter, babe. I'm much more interested in what you've got to say. I'd be looking to secure the loan against my mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, I, I moved in in uh, 91. Yeah, I bought my ex-husband out in 2001. But there's, there's still lots of equity in the house. Repayments over ten years. Yeah. Yeah, it's Gail McIntyre, 8 Coronation Street. Faye was put up for adoption for a reason. As far as I'm concerned, nothing's changed. Well, you're young, you can have other children. You can give them all the love you say you feel for Faye, but I'm a mother. Well, think about it. I've been reasonable. No. You should think about it. Social services are planning to assess you. You, know, you can wave bye-bye to all your privacy once them lot get the claws into you. Faye said that you're a nice guy. Is there anything else you've not told her? Convictions, admissions, addictions... It'll come out, you know. Fine. <sighs> Do you know what? I shouldn't have let you in here tonight. It won't be happening again. Well, at least let me say goodbye. You'll regret this. Is that a threat? No, it's a fact. She'll never forgive you. Yeah? Well, you know what? That's something else that I'll have to live with, innit? Like all the other heirlooms that you and your Jenny have left behind. Dad! Dad! You never said goodnight. I know. I know. And then I realised I've got money tied up in this place. I mean, not oodles, but enough to give us a start. I mean, it's not as if I've got a high-powered career to hang around for, is it? Or, or a low-powered one. Come to that. So, I rang a loan company. Oh. I gave them my details and asked for a quote. Easy peasy. No, no, Gail, stop wrestling with it. I wouldn't dream of asking you to give up your house. But I wouldn't be. I'd be borrowing against it. Just a Lucas-sized loan. Loan or remortgage. It means dipping into your nest egg, and I wouldn't hear of it. Now, just... Chalk this up to experience and move on. I mean, Weatherfield has its charms. Mainly you. I mean, life isn't all bad. Huh? But you agree it could be better? Mm -mm. Stare at that menu anymore and you'll slip into a coma. See what I did there? Coma. <laughs> oh, come on, babe. Don't torture yourself. From what I can gather, Sophie Webbs is throwing you a lifeline. How come you're not grabbing it? She seems fairly sussed, you know, for an 18-year-old. Old head, young shoulders. I like her. You know, she's been a good mate. Could you have been anything more? If I'd let her. Then bottled it. No look surprised. I'm not anything. I'm just listening. Well, what did my mum say? She, she must have said something. What do you mean, romance-wise? Romance-wise? Just that, you know, you were 
too busy for boys. Babe, you know, whoever you see, it's no business of mine, you know. I just want you to be happy and... I don't think you are. It's not like I was hiding anything. There's never anything to hide. A couple of one-night stands, a holiday romance, your advance from an unhappily married woman. Does that amount to a sex life? A bit embarrassing to admit your mum gets more action than you. Yeah, well, you see, you've got my genes, those unlucky and love genes. Until now. What I don't get, though, is, you know, your mum, Johnny, cool people. My mum, maybe. Remember that song? I'm not in love, but I'm open to persuasion. Joan Armatrade and tune. That was one of my dad's favourite songs. Well, that's a tune. Till one of the lads told him that Joan Armatrade didn't like women. Never played it again. Never, ever. My girlfriend likes to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, but me, I'm more of a more of a gut instinct kind of fella. So, if you go within a mile of Faye ever again, you will end up dancing in concrete boots. You got that? Yeah, 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 I got that, I got that. What next? You're going to be beating into Faye as well? She came looking for me, remember? Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but... Your dad's dead. It's not about time you started living. That's what I thought. When I met Sophie, hoped. And everything got messed up. Her dad waded in, my mum waded in. It's horrible. Yeah, and despite all that, she's come good. Offering to save your job. But lie to a disciplinary panel. It's a big offer. And then what? We walk off into the sunset. Her with a reputation in tatters, me living a lie. <sighs> I don't deserve her. I don't think she sees it like that. I acted unprofessionally. That's what I'm ashamed of. Not the fact the other person I kissed was a woman. Well, why not start by telling her that, eh? If I tell her, everything falls apart. <laughs> You've got a nerve. Haven't I, Joss? Shut the door. We won't want a crowd. There's a time with the hoof pipe. The time when she slammed his arm into a door. And you saw this? No, but I saw the bruises. But did you see the door slam deliberately? She's a manipulative cow. She's too clever. Now, what about the other injuries, the marks on his back? She thrashed him over and over. Did you step in? We weren't there. So if we didn't see it, it didn't happen, is that it? You know, a dodgy copper gets drummed out of the police force and yet they're still closing ranks. But a decent man like Tyrone doesn't stand a chance. Um, I am taking a statement. Yeah, we know where that's going to go, don't we? Straight in the bin. No, actually, it'll go to the Crown Prosecution Service and they can decide. She's back then? About an hour ago. And let me guess, you told the social worker she was the only one keeping you sane. Can't get a kid up. Oh, you're fooling some of the people. For now. But you and me, copper, care home kid, we both know that a loving mother would never volunteer to put her baby into care. Temporary foster care. Julie, Eileen, Hayley, you've got a list of my longer people who would have looked after Ruby. I was worried for her safety. <laughs> no, you weren't. You wanted to twist the knife. You wanted Tyrone's baby dragged, kicking and screaming from his arms for everyone to see. Who cares if Ruby was crying and pining all night? It was such a great show, wasn't it? Oh, oh just come clean now, eh? Well, you've still got the chance. <laughs> this. I know the system. I've got bruises, pictured, backed up, a solid 17 on the dash report. I am D.S. Garrett's dream witness. I hate to break it to you. But your boyfriend's going down. She won't come out of the room. What's she get hungry, love? She's lost her voice from yelling at me. She wants to change her name to Metcalf. Well, it was never Metcalf in the first place. That druggy Jenny's name was Bully. Don't you go doubting yourself, love. I 
can't win. I ban her from seeing him and she hates me. Let the relationship grow, let them start to meet up and... <sighs> she loves him more. Who am I trying to protect, eh? Her or me. So they didn't want to know? We tried. I don't think he believed us. <laughs> The bruises are real, but we've no proof your story was. Why did I delete those pictures off my phone? Because it's upsetting you having them on there first. Yeah, and what's a bit of upset, eh? If I'd have kept them, we could have nailed her by now. And she reckons she's got that garret eating out of her hands. When did she say this? Fizz? I went round to see her. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I've made things worse. No, how could you? I'm a dead man walking out. I've been set up off a true pro. I'm a cheat. I'm a danger to women. I'm never going to get to see my little Ruby again. Glyn and the boys plan a fancy dress party next. What could possibly go wrong? Stay with us. Great night out is after the break. <laughs> <laughs>